Hello everyone, welcome to a vlog that's starting in my bathroom. I know, it's very exciting, isn't it? Well, kind of. I mean, hey, surgery day. <laughs> it's been such a long time coming. Oh, I could actually cry. So welcome to my gallbladder surgery vlog. I know, I know, this is just a wonderful idea for do people, surely people do surgery vlogs, right? Like, hey, I'm about to have this procedure and not just like, I got my wisdom teeth out, look at how funny I am after anesthesia type of a thing, right? Well, get some hydration into my hair. But today's the day I'm getting my gallbladder removed. And oh my friends, to say that I'm excited is the understatement of a century, or of the century, I, Oh my god, I mean, you guys have heard, I'm sure, if you watch my channel, you've heard about me complaining in the past many videos because I've had many gallbladder attacks and they have been awful and debilitating and have been interfering with my everyday life. Especially, I would say before, like when I was first diagnosed with this and all that, I would say I was having an attack maybe like once or twice a week. This past week, slash even I would say maybe a week and a half, it has been every single night. Every single night for about two to four hours. Just crippling, debilitating pain. Can't even describe to you. Feels like you're going to die and you're like on the verge of like, do I call 911? Do I just bear with it? But like, I'm not sure. I have a slight temperature. I feel nauseous. So like maybe my gallbladder finally burst. Am I now going to go into sepsis? Am I going to get jaundiced? Am I going to die? You know, like you just don't know. And after having to pay for one emergency room visit, I really don't want to pay for another one. <laughs> Especially when I know I'm paying for surgery now. Isn't that sad that money has to come in the way of our health, but it just kind of is the way it is. I am glad that I have been able to to just bear with it, especially because I haven't been able to take any ibuprofen painkiller type things for the past week in prep for surgery because you're not allowed to take blood thinners. Makes sense, you don't want to bleed out during surgery, but apparently, you know, the surgery is supposed to be super, nothing special, everyday type thing. My surgeon, it's his specialty, like it's gonna be very easy in and out type of a outpatient procedure, you know? I'm going in, my procedure is at two in the afternoon, so I have to be there at noon. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing for two hours, <laughs> but I have to be there at noon and then it's supposed to begin at two. I think surgery is only supposed to take like an hour or two. I think it's supposed to be pretty quick and easy. I'm gonna have four incisions. It's all done laparoscopically, at least uh, it, that's how I'm going to have it done, thankfully. And so I'm gonna have four little scars from where they had the scopes and stuff inserted in my tummy to rip out my gallbladder. I feel weird, but I'm gonna ask the guy, the surgeon, if he can take a picture of my, I wanna see it. I wanna see how diseased and rotten and awful it is. <laughs> I saw, I mean, I saw the ultrasound and it looked like horrific, just the amount of gallstones and sludge and the size of them. Like when you have a surgeon that like primarily does gallbladder surgeries and he looks at your ultrasound and he sees the one stone that's causing the most problems and he says, oh, that's large. Like, you know, it's like your pain hasn't just all been in your head and you're not exaggerating. Like, okay. Apparently it, it, these are big ones and my gallbladder is a failure and out with it, be gone. I am so ready. I am so ready to say goodbye to this worthless organ of mine. It's not worthless, like we'll see. I'm definitely curious to see how my life is gonna change after this. I've certainly had to make changes leading up to this just to try and avoid the pain as best I can, you know, eating really low fat, just avoiding food a lot in general, which has, not been good as someone who has lived with disordered eating for much of her life. Like, it's it's not a good feeling to starve myself again. And it just brings back memories and it's one of those things where it's like, I don't want to get into this habit again, you know? Like, I've finally gotten to a place where I enjoy eating and I want to stay with that and not fear food, but food has become such a huge fear of mine. Like, is this gonna set it off? Is this gonna set it off? And like, basically not being able to eat after 4 p.m. because that's just gonna cause all sorts of problems. Someone is calling me. Mute! Moo 
Shute. Hello. Hi. Are you here? I am. I'm in the parking lot. You're early. I know. Take your time. I mean, I can come down now, but that means that when you come here after surgery, the floors will not be swept. Are you okay with that? Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sweep and then come down. Okay. I see where your priorities lie. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Oh, yes, all right. I need to sweep the floors. Basically, I don't, what was I talking about? Food, it's scary. And I'm curious to see how my body processes foods as I don't have a gallbladder. <laughs> um, but for my mom, she's taking care of me here. She's gonna be my nurse. In preparation for my mom, I have gotten her things. We're gonna try making chili and some cornbread. At least, I mean, at least then she can have food to eat here at my place. <laughs> um, and then I also got her some snackies. She requested coffee because I don't drink coffee because it gives me diarrhea. And she needs coffee, so she requested these frappuccinos. I didn't know what kind she wanted those, so I got plain coffee I got vanilla coffee and then my mom is a muncher so I got and by that I just mean she likes to snack on things so I got her some Twizzlers bites and I also got her some dark chocolate caramel popcorn because she likes popcorn and that's gourmet so treat yay so yeah here we are surgery day <gasps> my other sock yes I did laundry the other night I thought I lost one of my socks. I thought the sock gremlins had taken it from me. So here I am, sweeping before surgery. I know, how fun. <laughs> so vlog worthy. Oh, my mom likes things clean. And I understand that. I, uh, I do sweep every day anyways, because <laughs> I hate the feeling of litter on my bare feet. Normally I sweep at night, but last night I was very busy getting work done and prepped. I'm not as far ahead with filming as I would like to be, or filming I am, but editing. I'm not as ahead of things as I want. I've got two videos scheduled. I wish it would have been three or four, but that's just the way it worked out. At least I have videos filmed so I can edit them while I am recovering. So I don't know, I mean, a lot of you guys have said that uh, recovery should be really easy. And I feel like I have been reading that a lot online, but then, you know, you read the horror stories where people are like, nope, recovery took two weeks and blah, blah, blah. So I tried to prep ahead, basically. How does the saying go? Hope for the best, plan for the worst? Something like that anyways. All right, so you guys want a little fashion OOTD surgery edition? So here I am. I'm wearing this awesome sports bra from Target. I thrifted this shirt, that's a night shirt, so I can go straight to bed when I get home. Heard in the yellow lighting, but then uh, leggings, yes, courtesy of, not courtesy of, I got these at Target a long time ago. Uh, did I say this is from Goodwill? Of course, I can't be comfortable without a grandpa cardigan, so we're throwing this guy on. How are the babies? Are you excited? Yeah, not really. <laughs> and then some flip-flops for easy on, easy off, yeah? They are gold, so they're fancy. Got these in Vegas, ooh. I also need to take my earrings out real quick, which feels so weird to not have earrings in, but can't have those in surgery. At least that's what, that's what the nurse told me. All right, my friends, there we have it. My earrings are all out. I feel very naked, but I am gonna get going, head down. My mom is here, as you heard. I'm thirsty and I'm hungry, but that's what happens when you can't eat for a very long time <laughs> before surgery. So, tell you, let's go. Hospital, hospital. We. How about the driver? <laughs> Does the driver want to be filmed? Yeah. Okay, I was really zoomed in. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> That's us. Patient visitor parking. So, I have stories about my IV that I can tell. Uh, you might see. We tried. 
Uh, I have never had a problem with veins before. I suppose it'll be more interesting if it's on my face. So I'm, I'm telling them as I'm telling you. Just, okay. So, guy that was doing it, he, I don't know, he's, I don't know. Uh, one of the nurses, um, he was like asking me all the questions and stuff, and he took a look at my arms and was like, what is that? Oh. And I was like, okay, not the most gracious way of asking, but like I have a skin condition, like it's fine though. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hmm, like he didn't believe me. I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what to tell you. So he goes to put my IV in finally, and he's like super struggling with it. Like I can feel him like wiggling around. He's like, am I hurting you? And I was like, I mean, it stings, but you know, you do what you gotta do. Uh, and Are you rolling? I don't know, but all of a sudden he like goes to pull it out and there's like blood spurts everywhere. And he's like, laughing. He's like, ha, 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 I'm not very good at this. <laughs> and I'm like, ha, <laughs> <laughs> clearly. Did you tell the anesthesiologist that? No, but, well, then another lady came in, because I couldn't pee, because I haven't had anything to drink, mm -hmm. and so they just did it through blood. And so she was like, so I hear you've got some problematic veins. And I'm like, not normally, but apparently today they're acting up. And she was like, well, let me see. And she, like, stuck it in and got my blood just fine, like mm -hmm. that. And she was like, yeah, we won't have him do you again. Like, we'll get someone else for you. It's like, okay. So they had another lady come in, and she got it just fine. So that was that was my experience just now. So I have my cool socks. I'm sorry, what? I have my cool socks. She's having surgery today, but... My cool socks? Your cool socks. I know. I'm also very naked and sweaty under this. My oh, wow! Baby. How's the patient? I'm all set. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Mm. Have a good weekend. Everybody. Here's Cassie the morning after her surgery. Looking good. As you all know me in my natural state. Yes. Grandpa Cardigan. Hair up. Acne. <laughs> How'd you sleep last night? They abused my throat with that breathing tube. And uh, I really don't know, they really shoved it in there. So I wasn't expecting that, that my throat hurts more than my stomach. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is and I'm alive. <laughs> Good. Well, hopefully tomorrow, take off your bandages and the healing will continue. <laughs> and not to get addicted to the hydrocodone. No. <laughs> I'm such an addict. Uh, yeah, right. That's why I've been rotating the ibuprofen and the hydrocodone so far. Right, that sounds hardcore, Cass. And why I took like a eight or nine hour stretch without taking anything. Yeah. Mm. That's a bad. Sounds like a problem. <laughs> well, you look good. Oh, good. Yeah. We'll check in later. Mom's making chili. I'm burning everything. This is burnt garlic, onion, and green pepper. Yummy. Put in the olive oil. Yeah. I've turned it down now. Yum. And now we get to open cans. Lots of cans. Twizzlers was in my list of ingredients or my bad. This these are very important in chili. This is what will make it taste the best. <laughs> the joys. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, you're a lid all the way off her. Oh, well, I didn't mean to. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, that's a messy choice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just stepped on some hair. Mom is adding some nice fragrance to my kitchen floor mat. Got onion. Oh, over here, too, huh? Oh, jeez. Good job. You brought wing ringworm home from the... the <laughs> Oh, is that what that is? Yes. So, tomato sauce, crushed tomatoes. Mm -hmm. No. Diced tomatoes with garlic. And basil and oregano. Yeah. Don't forget that. I don't like those as much. <laughs> it was all they had. No, oh, it's the kind I like. And the beautiful part is that once this stuff is uh, in here, you just, you just leave it. Leave it. Mm -hmm. Another diced. Yes. Okay. Now go over here. Why? Light red kidney beans. Drained. And of course the kitty has to inspect. <laughs> Make sure they're good beans. Are they good, Fig? Paper towel roll, I see. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cooking with my mom. <laughs> this is pathetic. Beans, beans, the magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you toot. Where's the dark red? We don't it's need so, tootin' cats. It's so yummy. White chili beans. Let's see how my beans look. They look yummy to me. I can add one more. Oh yeah. We'll add some tomato sauce. We can add some water to it if it's too fresh. Big, you look concerned. Susan salt, chili powder. Measure carefully. Show us how carefully. This is how carefully you must do it. I don't know that I can replicate that. It's so careful. Yeah, salt. Did you get that? Carefully. I did. One, two, three. Four, five, six. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, it hurts. <laughs> I think I need some water. It's a little thick. Not that there's anything wrong with thickness. No. Especially in a thrifter. <laughs> now, was that a careful amount of water? Oh, yes. Okay. It needs a ton more chili powder. But you were so careful. Yeah, people are gonna go, oh my god, she puts all that in. Like it's, it's chilly. Right. And then a little splashy splash. That smells better. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, we should be good. Normally I add ground beef first. Not in this household. But not in this household. Easy peasy. Floor onions. <laughs> you know what I think of your floor onions? What? <gasps> floor beans? <laughs> no. <laughs> floor onions I could let slide, but that floor bean. <laughs> now I'm pissed. <laughs> I wonder if mom went in the fridge at some point. Chili powder? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is that better? Mm, I think there's a little onion there, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So 
So now we can smooth this into the corners so it's nice and level. And when Cassie wakes up from her nap, she's going to have some delicious Mexican cornbread, cheesy as can be. And there we have it. The pot of chili with all kinds of veggies and beans. Cornbread. And then there it is, ready to eat. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to many, many days later. I am almost, I guess I'm going on, I'm about two and a half weeks post-op now. I just kind of stopped vlogging because there's only so much you can really vlog after a surgery, especially like this gallbladder surgery. It has been one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. You know, all of the stress leading up to it and worries about the horror stories I read online. I mean, don't get me wrong, like I'm pretty sure I've said I'm not trying to negate anyone who has had a negative experience with this surgery because that definitely, it sounds like there have been those experiences, but I feel lucky enough in that so far I have been in the major percentage that once the surgery was done, recovery has been fairly easy and overall like I said, one of the best decisions I've ever made. Ugh, it is just so incredible. I mean, I've already edited like the first portion of this vlog and just like seeing myself, just like being able to see how just tired and ill I was, you know, with my gallbladder in and just drained of energy and just the, the look on my face, you could just tell that I wasn't doing well. And like now, you know, in my videos and stuff, people are just like, Cassie, you're, you look so good and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I feel good. I feel so much better. I did a live stream. What was it? It was a little over a week. I think it was nine days post-op. So if you want to watch that, I definitely talked a lot about, you know, the process of the surgery and this and that, uh, a little less choppily than I guess this vlog might have seemed. So if you want to hear me talk about all of that and also to see the huge bruise that I had on my arm from the awful IV, I mean, I still have the bruise going on almost three weeks post-op, but it's almost gone. That and my throat were honestly probably more sore than my actual incision <laughs> sites, which is so insane to me. So I don't know, is that common? Like any nurses or whatever else? Let me know in the comments down below, because like I said, my nurse and I think said she was like the anesthesia person's assistant. So I don't know what exactly she does during the surgery, but like I said, she had told me maybe for a day or two, my throat would be sore from that breathing tube. Is it common for it to have hurt that much for like a good two weeks after my surgery? Like my throat is just, I would say in these past few days, pretty pain free. That's insane to me and it hurt so bad. It was like a really bad, I don't know, cold I guess when you have a really raw sore throat. Like it just was so painful. I was not expecting that to be the painful portion of this surgery. Don't get me wrong, my abdomen, my abdomen, my abdomen <laughs> was certainly sore as well. I, I think I can show you guys my incisions. I thought it was gonna be four incisions that they used, but it ended up, I only had three, so that was kind of nice. I swear to God, if any of you make fun of my freaking stomach. <laughs> One of my biggest insecurities. I hate my stomach, but uh, it's a normal stomach for a chubby person like me. I've got stretch marks. I have always had the sad frowny belly button. You've never been able to see my belly button, I feel like, since birth. Like, even when I was super skinny, like, didn't eat for days straight skinny, uh, I still had this kind of a belly button, so. Here's my belly button, stretch marks and all on my tummy. But you can see in my belly button, hopefully you can see. I mean, I guess I got lucky in that I have one of these kinds of belly buttons because the scar is pretty hidden in there. Can you see it? It's on the bottom part of my belly button. Ta-da! There's another one of my incisions. You can barely even see it. <laughs> I'm like checking to be sure, like, yes, that was my incision. So that's tiny. And then the bigger one, I just have been using these like scar away strips just cause I do get keloids really easy and I can tell that this one is kind of turning into a keloid. And also it's just nice so that the band of my bra and stuff doesn't rub it too raw since this one was having some trouble healing or having the most trouble healing. But look at it, that's it. I mean, that's the worst of it. You can see in comparison to my finger, 
It's pretty small, you know, it is turning into a keloid, which is a bummer, but I would so much rather have this keloid than have my gallbladder back in. So yeah, I mean, that's, I'm pretty sure it. Like I said, uh, most of the talking, and if you want to hear more about my post-op stuff, like I said, definitely watch that live stream of mine. I know it's a long live stream, but I always put timestamps in the description down below so you can jump to the gallbladder portions of it. But yeah, I hope this was at least kind of a fun vlog for you guys to see something a little different on my channel, and also just, you know, in case any of you are about to go through a gallbladder surgery or if you are questioning whether or not you should get your gallbladder removed, maybe this video can give you some reassurance, some confidence that, you know, it it'll be okay. It, it should be. I mean, I can't guarantee that, but <laughs> chances are things will go great. And like I've said a million times, hopefully for you as well, it will be the best decision you ever make in your life. It, uh, it feels so good to have those days behind me where I don't have to worry about what I'm eating, when I'm eating, all of that stuff. It feels like a luxury. <laughs> and to not have to worry about pain. So I feel very lucky that my surgery went well, I had an easy recovery for the most part, and I feel very lucky that my pain and illness, all of that, is something that was able to be fixed so easily, you know? like in comparison to many other people who have body ailments and whatnot, you know, some people, either A, they can't get a diagnosis, B, there isn't anything doctors can do for them, you know, like, I, I really don't take for granted the fact that I was able to get diagnosed, even if it took longer than it should have, the fact that I was able to get it diagnosed, that I was able to have it taken care of, like, I feel very, very lucky. So, thank you to those of you who have been on this journey with me. I hope it was kind of fun, like I said, just seeing it something a little different here my channel. Let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed it, if you enjoyed watching my mom be a little YouTube chef for a minute, and also just let me know how you're doing. You can also let me know if you enjoyed the video, found it helpful, whatever the case may be, by giving it a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you're new here, hey, hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe. You can tippity tap that notification bell down below. You can become a member of my casserole family here on my channel. I'd love to have you here. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. Until next time, just stay well. Until then, bye.